believe you. This is, this is how we know that this is real. This isn't just some token thing. I mean, you get a break. My legs are numb already. This is awesome. It could be the ocean, though, so things are good this morning. I want to introduce you to Samara Chambers. Uh, one of the things I love about Samara is her quiet leadership. She is an influencer. She is someone who realizes that God has given her a story and a testimony and gifted her to be uh, an influencer of others uh, in his king, for his kingdom, uh, to establish it, to reinforce it in lives, and to shine bright. And so it's just a thrill this morning that she gets to share her story with you to encourage you uh, as what God's done in her heart over these last years. So would you give an ear to her as she shares? My name is Samara Chambers, and I accepted Jesus into my heart in the year of 2011. That year was an extremely hard year for me because my parents experienced a short period of separation. I knelt down and said, Jesus, at this time of need, come into my heart and show me the way of your grace and forgiveness. From then on, my life was a lot different. I started looking at myself, not looking at others around me. Of course, there's no such thing as a perfect Christian. I enjoyed church when I went to it. The pastor filled me up, and I was more joyful. I was brought up in a good Christian home, where we encourage each other to fill ourselves up with the fruits of the Spirit. My dad does devotions with us each night, and every time I always think, Jesus is right here with me, reading devotions with me. And that's why it's really important to surround yourselves with other Christian friends and family. Speaking of Christian friends, I have literally the best Christian friends ever. My best friend, Emily Kirsch, is one of my friends who encourages me to act like a Christian all the time. Whenever we listen to a song, and maybe it's not the best song to be listening to, we confront each other about it. We say, why not listen to songs that encourage you and build you up? I've known her since I was two years old, and we could not survive without each other. My favorite verse is John 3.16. And yeah, everyone knows that verse. Maybe you think there's nothing special about that verse. Well, it says God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. He only had one son. So that whoever could believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. That is one of my favorite verses because that is one of the most important and crucial parts of being a Christian. This year at Camp, at camp Kiwanis, which is an awesome Christian camp, my pastor there, he spoke right into my heart. His name is Storm Moore. Yes, like the thunder, Storm. He told us that nobody is going to force you to change or make you a Christian, and that's your choice. You have to do that part yourself. He said there's always that point in your life where you change to be more like God and become a Christian. Well, actually, you, don't, you never change. You grow in, in, or stay where you are. And he also told us that Jesus said in the Bible, I'm not really sure what verse it is, but <laughs> he said, I would rather you be fully with me or against me, never in between. And so, Samara, you've uh, accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. And it's your desire this morning to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Spirit? Yes. Let's do that. Okay. So I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> hmm. And your grandpa and your dad, I think, are going to share some verses for you. of course today, but I just want to share you a couple words that Jesus taught to one of the teachers uh, in uh, John 3. He said, your favorite verse happens to be there too. And Jesus re <clears throat> replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. And how can someone be born when they're old, Nicodemus asked? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. You should not be surprised if my saying, you must be born again. The wind will wherever it pleases. 
You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit, and the Spirit rests on you today. Can I read your favorite uh, verse again? For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Congratulations, Tamara. Uh, hi, Samara. It's a real special day for us. I'm really proud of you. And um, when you're a dad and a mom, you can't ask God for any more than to save our children. And in Acts chapter 16, there's a lady named Lydia that Rachel talks about. And Lydia received the word, and her whole family was saved and baptized all at the same time. And... Um, I'm going to read to you, a lot of people say, well, I'm saved now, and I'm baptized, and now what do I do? And there's a part in the Bible that I believe is what I often refer to as the constitution of Christianity. So then how do we live? Like, what do we do now? In Romans chapter 12 reads, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You talked in your testimony about the devotions that we do, and one of the things I strive to, to help you guys to grow, to, to go out into the school field, to go out into the fields in the school and, and talk to kids about Christ. I, teach, I ask you to teach other kids these things. Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in our tribulations. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If it's possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Believe it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, this is really important. Feed him. If he is thirsty, you give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Continue, hence, to grow in Christ. Amen. Thanks, Will. Let's pray. God, thank you for Samara, for her testimony, for her friendships, for what you've done in her life, where you met her in the midst of a trying situation and tipped her heart towards you. God, as she wants to continue to grow and to move ahead, would you fill her with your spirit again? Would you continue to uh, move and use her uh, to your glory for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven? And then we pray. Amen. Thanks, Samara. Let's give her a hand.